and does not say to us after he comes now what he did will be effective for you if you straighten out the disciples can't quite get their minds around that kind of graciousness and they are astounded Mark wants us to know how radically strange that is. That God would care to love us. We, people who are so used to, if this happens, then this results. So if I have been good, then this will happen. If I have been bad, then I get what I deserve. Jesus is breaking the system. Jesus is saying, God is not part of that system. That's not what he set up. That's not how he has behaved. When Amos confronts the people of Israel and tells them they are working with that, they live in these nice stone houses, and they must assume that God is surely on their side, he has to tell them, you have been cheating the poor in the gate. The gate was where they found their court, their judgment. You went to the gate of the town, and you got your case heard by the rulers, the town elders. But the town elders are the ones who are living in the nice stone houses. The town elders are the ones who, if their friends and neighbors likewise living in nice stone houses, if their friends had their servants go out and steal a few sheep from some poor schmuck, and he comes and complains, guess who gets heard? Justice was not being done, and God says that's not a matter just that you haven't balanced the scales of justice. It's a matter of you haven't heard me. You haven't listened to the fact that I was one who was concerned about the poor. You haven't listened to the fact that I gave you the land and I gave them the land and it belongs to them and it should stay there. That was how God was taking care of people. So it wasn't just a matter that they had been unjust with some other people. It was a matter that they were at war with God. When Jesus then reminds the man who comes to him and says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he reminds him of the commandments dealing with the neighbor. He is pointing him in that direction. It's not just the neighbor. If you only read the commandments of, well, I haven't killed anyone, so chalk up one for me. And if it's only this scorecard, then you haven't yet learned that God wants us to care about the neighbor. Not just, I haven't killed anyone lately, or I haven't lied about them, or I haven't stolen someone else's wife, or I haven't whatever defrauded. Jesus adds one. It's a rather interesting one in our culture, where we sell all kinds of things sometimes. Um, but the concern is for how do we live with the neighbor, because that shows how we live with God. Have we understood that God was the one who loved us prior to our deeds? Have we understood that God was one who gave himself for us. If then we cannot bend and give ourselves for the neighbor, then we are people who haven't understood who God is. Mark wants us to see that. Mark wants us to grasp God in his magnificent care for us. And sometimes then, how far we are, and how much we need to go back then to the graciousness of God, but then to live as that people of God. People who understand God has given us grace so that we can live graciously with the people around us. Amen.
Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.